ghosts appear in many forms. We can see them. What was that? We can hear them. I am not afraid. And sometimes we can even feel them. We've gone around the globe in search of the most terrifying spirits and supernatural beings who continue to live on long after their deaths. On world's scariest hauntings, anything can happen. Because you never know who's watching when the lights go out. What the hell was that? In this episode, 18th century vaults hidden within the foundations of one of the most haunted cities in the world. The reputation of Edinburgh vaults was one of murder, was one of mayhem, of mystery, of torture. These subterranean slums housed Edinburgh's poorest and most deprived citizens, most of whom have never left. If I could describe the vaults in one word, I would say intense, probably the most haunted experience I've ever had as an investigator. Down here, nobody is safe. I'm one of the ones that does get picked up under... I just saw a shadow. Can I stop? I literally just saw a shadow. Edinburgh, Scotland's historic and beautiful capital. The seventh most populous city in Britain is a vibrant and exciting place to be. But underneath the flagstones, you'll find the unworldly remains of a forgotten slum. Formed in the foundations of the South Bridge in the 1700s, these vaults originally housed tradesmen. But due to regular flooding, the units were soon abandoned and taken over by Edinburgh's underclass. Eventually, the vaults were sealed up and forgotten about until they were accidentally unearthed in the late 20th century. Ewan Armstrong spends most of his days and nights down here, guiding tourists through the unholy catacombs. Well, when I started in the vaults many years ago, I wasn't a massive believer in ghosts. And I know many people do say the same thing, they're not massive believers. But when you spend time down in these rooms, just like anywhere else, you get to know the space, you get to know every noise and rumble and bang. So when you hear things that are different, you do question them. But I have seen many figures, apparitions in these rooms. And again, when you're working here, you tend to always rationalise and think it's maybe a customer that's wandered in or somebody, a colleague, and then you realise that there's nobody else with you. The underground world crackles with paranormal activity. Witches, children, and a mean-spirited voyeur haunt the 18th century vaults. The spirits that call these rooms home are now all that is left inside the dark, empty chambers. I believe that the Edinburgh Vault is such an active, paranormally active location because of the murder that took place there, the crime, the punishment, and the overcrowded conditions that there were in the vaults. The history alone makes it haunted, whether it's spirits or energies. There's so many things that are going on that you're experiencing when you're down there. I would definitely say it's, it's haunted. With the vaults being used for over 100 years as an underground city, it's thought that over 10,000 people may have passed through these rooms. So I think it's no surprise to find that maybe one or two of them may still be here. Many people have reported a shadowy figure standing on the steps here or following behind them as they make their way down these passageways. Visitors to Edinburgh's Southbridge vaults often report seeing ghosts. One of these spirits is still seeking revenge for her death over 200 years ago. So with so many of these rooms being used for brothels and taverns, it does lead many mediums and clairvoyants to pick up on spirits around the area. And one of the most common ones within our section of vaults is a young female who 
has been picked up on many times and actually it's one of the ones that I've witnessed myself in these rooms and that's outside in our corridor here. Many people have seen a woman standing in this location and they always report the same thing. They report the long, dark hair, but also what looks like blood on her face. Apparently, the story goes that she went down there to meet two men and she was actually set upon by a group of 30 men and was actually murdered. Now, because the group of men was so large, nobody was actually prosecuted for her murder, which could be a reason as to why she's still haunting the building. I've had many people come down into this particular section and witness her. My scariest one here was during one of my daytime historical tours in which a small boy from New York, a seven-year-old, on a holiday, he sat physically on the steps and started in front of a group of 14 people, started physically talking to a woman here, and he said that the men had been bad to the lady. She was stopped on these stairs, where it's reported that she got her head so severely beaten off the steps. The woman's body that was found here in 1797, and Elizabeth Ann Morrison, she was found with her skull in over six pieces. Her body itself being taken to the local school, the anatomy, and sold on for nothing more than beer money for the local police. She obviously has some unfinished business. Nobody was actually tried for her murder, which means they got away with it. And she probably won't rest until he's been found, but obviously she's never going to rest now. Paranormal encounters with ghosts just like the murdered woman are the reason that tourists come from all around the globe to visit this dark underground world and many leave with unexplainable souvenirs. So people who have been down to the vaults and spent time there have reported being pinched and scratched, uh, prodded. Um, they've reported hearing noises. Some have claimed to have seen apparitions and also have had rocks and stones thrown at them. Physical contact with the spirit world has led experts to believe that a poltergeist may be active in the vaults. The word poltergeist is the German word for noisy ghost or noisy spirit. They are able to throw objects, move objects, interact with the living, and will cause mayhem and distress anywhere that they're found. are lucky enough to, to have any sort of physical contact, such as a push or a touch or anything like that. Well, it makes people feel wary, wondering who stood behind them. And especially if you're in the dark, it kind of enhances the, the fear factor. Edinburgh is spread across seven different hills. After the success of the North Bridge in 1772, town planners decided to commission another, the South Bridge. This new 1,000-foot-long expanse would be able to house tradesmen within the 19 arches below. The bridge itself was built in the valley of the Cowgate, which itself had been quite problematic over the years, involving things like plague and witchcraft. And it was one reason the kind of slightly more scientific Georgians who weren't the biggest believers in a curse or myth, they thought by putting these rooms here, they could, well, get rid of the past and start again. After three years of construction, the bridge and its high-end shops were ready to open. One of the oldest stories associated with the bridge as to why it might possibly be haunted is that when it was completed in 1788, it was agreed that the wife of a judge was going to be the first person to walk across it. But she unfortunately passed away a few days before. But having already made the promise, the local authorities agreed to uphold it. And indeed, she was the first person to cross the bridge, but in a coffin. And since then, the local people have considered the bridge to be cursed. And it appeared that the locals may have been right. Despite the tradesmen thriving to begin with, after just three years, they were forced out due to flooding. And of course, this meant as these merchants moved out, some of Edinburgh's most poor and destitute moved in. And that is, of course, when the underground city is born. 
And that also covers people from the Irish famines, the Highland clearances, all moving here en masse, raising the population and also rising the crime rate. As you can imagine, if there were 10 to 16 people living in one room and all stacked up on top of each other, the conditions were pretty horrendous. There was you no know, running water, there was you no know, sort of method of sanitation, there was no ventilation, it was incredibly dark. I mean, to the point where, um, I mean, it's real pitch black. You can't see the hand in front of your face. Sometime around the mid 1800s, the vaults became so uninhabitable that even the poorest citizens had to leave. A history of death, disease and crime were sealed away. The ghosts of Edinburgh's vaults remained buried for over a hundred years. So back in the 1970s, this particular room became the point of interest for a group of students who were using these rooms. Of course, they were renting a flat connected on here and naturally being three young gentlemen, they knocked through one of the plasterboard walls and found all this behind it and used it for many months for parties. But in one evening here in 1979, it said that at a wild drinking party, two young girls who'd been attending, they both at the same time got held against this wall by nothing. They were terrified. If something was holding you against a wall and you wanted to report it to the police, you have to have somebody seen doing the crime, but they never saw anyone. In 1985, the underground chambers were excavated and the world below was once again discovered. Since then, the Edinburgh vaults have come alive with the echoes of the dead. Below the cobbled streets of Edinburgh are a series of vaults, once home to traders before becoming a slum for the underclasses. The labyrinth of mysterious rooms play host to a number of ghosts. But it's not just underground where you'll find the spirits of Scotland's capital. Edinburgh is home to many of the world's scariest hauntings. I think the thing with Edinburgh is it's a very old settlement. Obviously, you're built between two volcanoes again, and many people, uh, especially things like pagans and Wicca, they believe that that makes it an energy hotspot. But I think because Edinburgh, for many hundreds of years, was such a small place, because of the barrier walls being built around us and the continuing problem with the English-Scottish wars, it does mean that life is lived very quickly within a very small space. And I think maybe that intensity of life and loss of life has led Edinburgh to be a very haunted place. But it's beneath the noisy capital city where most of the ghosts reside. And there's one in particular who has been known to terrify both the locals and the tourists. Many people have reported seeing apparitions in the vaults, and their people have also reported being grabbed by unseen hands. There are dark forces there, children's spirits. There's also a spirit called the Watcher a.k.a. Mr. Boots. This spirit has been seen by many visitors and tour guides in Edinburgh vaults. He is said to linger and lurk in the dark tunnels and chambers, watching people, and he also interacts with them, following them around as they're on tour. Mr. Boots is one of the vault's most feared residents, a mean-spirited man who has become synonymous with the footwear he treads the vaults in. These steps are where people do report seeing him the most. The sound of heavy boots, the sound of groaning, growling is also heard here. And many of our customers and staff, as they've been in the area, they will get that hackles raised and they will naturally turn just because they think something might be behind them. No one really knows who he is. There's rumors he's a cobbler. There's rumors that he could possibly be a slum landlord, a murderer. But the one thing that is most common with him is he's not good intent. There was one psychic medium here not too long ago, and she actually ran out of the vaults when she tried to communicate with him, with him because she said he was completely evil. When you have that feeling of someone watching you. 
you are conscious of that all the time. And especially if you're down in the vaults and you, you venture anywhere on your own, which nine times out of 10, I usually do, it's not a nice feeling. You do get kind of the feelings of dread and anxiousness and obviously the adrenaline starts to rush and when you do actually think you've captured something, that's when the adrenaline turns to excitement. This photograph, taken by a tourist, shows Mr Boots standing ominously behind an unsuspecting woman. He stood lurking in the background. He's blocking out some of the light, and there's a clearly distinctive feature. He's wearing a pair of boots. Local paranormal investigator Gordon Pete has been visiting the vaults for years. He has felt the presence of Mr. Boots on numerous occasions. He believes that the vaults are his, with some of our guests being physically touched. They felt cold, um, scratched. But there was no pushing or shoving. But the, there was quite a lot of activity on the human pendulum. You invite a spirit to push that person forward or backwards to answer the questions, yes or no, and that was really active. Nikki Curry was on a ghost hunt in the vaults in January 2018, when she too had a mysterious encounter with Mr Boots. We did some Ouija boards and stuff and table tipping and stuff like that, and then we went off on our own, and that's when there was just two of us that came up here on our own, and uh, we felt somebody was watching us and there was nobody here because everybody else was down the other end. I couldn't move, I actually froze and said, there's somebody staring at us. But it was pitch black, so I didn't see anything. So I said, let's take a couple of pictures and then we'll go. So we took our photos on our iPhones and then just left. It wasn't until the following morning that Nikki looked back at the pictures. She couldn't believe what she'd captured. It just looked like a figure. It just looked like somebody was walking down the stairs in front of us. Somebody did a bit of research and said it might be the watcher, and that's why we obviously felt like we were being watched. It did look like a figure, and it looked like he had long hair, and it looked like he had boots on. So, yeah, it, it is an amazing photo. I'm just chuffed. The eyewitness that took a photograph of apparently Mr Boots, he clearly displays an image there of what looks like a long coat, some kind of outfit that's touching the floor. There's no facial features, but the apparition that's manifesting itself is very tall, it's very slender, and it does definitely have a long robe or some form of coat that it's wearing. Experts believe that sightings of Mr Boots are like action replays of the past. One theory that was proposed in the 19th century uh, to explain possible appearance of apparitions was uh, something known as stone tape theory, which was the idea that material such as stone or similar to the way uh, a cassette tape might work can retain sort of impressions of the past. It's almost like time rewinding over and over and over again and constantly replaying the same thing because it was imprinted in the space. So the reason why people might think, for example, that Mr. Boots remains within the vaults is because perhaps he is a projection that has been stored in the sort of stone and therefore he, in fact, is not looking at anybody. We are just experiencing him from a different time. Nikki has returned to the vaults for the first time to face her fears. It's weird being back here, like when I look there, I think, yeah, that's weird, because we did feel really scared standing here. It's actually quite scary standing here just now, and it's daylight, it's not even during the night. <laughs> but what if Nikki had come face to face with Mr Boots? I think we would have screamed, I think we probably would have been in a huddle. I don't know if we'd been able to move, because um, there's nothing up that way, so I don't think we would have got it out. I don't know, I might have passed out. The entrance to the South Bridge vaults is on Nidri Street. The road itself has a scary past. So when these vaults were first built, it's partly to encourage new business, but also to discourage the past. And with this particular section of vaults here, this being Nidri's wine, the original street, it's a street very famous in the 1580s, right into the early 17th century, with witchcraft trials 
And of course, the most famous one on this particular street is a woman called Agnes Finney. And she's reportedly still lingering in these rooms. She's known to have cursed the entire street. She was herself, of course, burnt to death after being accused of 20 counts of witchcraft, including apparently one day in the marketplace, bumping into a small boy in which she cursed him. He's known to have become paralyzed and died two days later. The history of witchcraft continues to this day in the vaults. This is our room that we have rented out to the Source Coven of the Blue Dragon. They're Scotland's leading pagans or witches. And with this particular room here, they believe they've blessed it. Everybody is quick to assume that witches are bad or dark or evil or they're trying to conjure and, and they're very capable of that, but majority of them is for the good. Many of our customers who come down here on these tours, they have of course taken photographs in this location and they will sometimes pick up on what looks like a figure standing in the particular room here which again for us is strange because it's meant to be a protected room. That's why you've got things like the gargoyles outside. They were placed here by the witches to stop anything evil entering. So whether the figure is malevolent or a more positive person, again, we'll leave that up to the people that visit these rooms to decide for themselves. This photograph taken inside the witches' room has been analyzed by paranormal experts across the world. The picture makes sense because if there was a coven down there, that's a lot of energy. They bring energy together to make things happen. Buildings hold energy. So that totally makes sense that you would see such profound energy coming up from inside the pentagram. I saw some photographs of the witch standing in the corner, very, very clear photographs of the witches in the corner. Unfortunately, none of our cameras picked up anything the times that we've been here. I'd love to have seen that for myself and for our cameras to pick that up. The activity within the vaults is very exciting for a keen ghost hunter like Gordon. It's an intense feeling. It's almost you're waiting for something to happen. It's overwhelming, the feeling. You feel the hairs in the back of my neck standing up just now being here, that you just don't know what's going to happen. An uneasy feeling being here. An uneasy feeling caused by the supernatural inhabitants who remain in the Edinburgh vaults some 200 years after their deaths. Only a few feet below one of Europe's most historic cities, ghosts haunt a maze of vaults that once housed the underclass of Edinburgh. One of the chambers in particular has been rife with paranormal activity of an evil kind. Back in 1995, a group of local Wiccans, they moved into this particular room, the stone circle you can see here. It was placed here by them to be a protective area, an area of safety. On one occasion, a priest who came on a tour here, he believed he picked up on a demonic entity telling us we should simply brick up the door. But, People do come in and those people that pass through the stones are apparently in the greatest of danger because the witches who use our vaults, they believe they shut the circle down in 1995 and they believe they shut it down and offered the space inside to whatever malevolent entity was here. And since that date, customers come in here again, many people gesturing to each other to walk in, to taunt it, and they will leave with scratches, cuts, bruises, and many people reporting for many weeks afterwards suffering things like sleep paralysis, seeing shadows and shapes moving around their own homes. Paranormal investigator Tom Buckmaster had a terrifying experience when he tried to cross into the demon circle. From the moment we sort of walked into that place, we were being followed by shadow figures. Uh, we had footsteps following us up uh, the corridors towards the vaults. I mean, it was just a strange, eerie place that you just feel constantly that there's something else there with you. Tom's footage from November 2016 reveals the fear felt by himself and his fellow paranormal investigation team members. 
I think one of my team members, Kev, he's studying the stone circle. Obviously, there's supposed to be a lot of negativity around that. Apparently, um, there was a ritual kind of done to keep a demon within the, the stone circle. If anyone steps in there, people have been attacked, scratched, pushed. I think they've even had ambulances called to people. When he stepped in there, um, he felt something touching his back. The whole room went ice cold. It's quite cold down there already, um, but there was just a significant decrease in temperature. And at the same time as he was in there, we uh, turned on the digital recorder and uh, we caught growling sighs that just weren't there in the moment. What is that? Rewind it quick. There's a growl on that. It was just like a intense fear. Obviously, I'd heard about things that happened in there, but it was just like, I was I was all up for it before the investigation, and even when we first got there and we were setting things up, I kept saying, I'm going in it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in it, I don't care, I'm gonna go in. The point when I was about to sort of put my foot over, something was just, I don't know, it's like a, a feeling, just something stopping me, just, as if someone's telling me, like, don't go in there. And it was just an instant fear, goosebumps, my whole body was just sort of reacting, and I just couldn't do it. It was just, something stopping me. If you really don't want to do it, don't do it. In my head, it was just like that feeling of you just know something's going to go wrong if if you do it, if that makes sense. Um, just that that pure fear, that's the only way I can describe it. It's really strange. Still scarred by that night, Tom has yet to return to the vaults. They can be terrifying. Yeah, truly terrifying at some points. I do definitely want to go back. I think there's more to the place, there's more we need to sort of find out. And I think if we do go back, we'll probably get more than what we did before. When the South Bridge vaults opened for business in 1788, many children disappeared while working down there. Paid by local tradesmen to climb up chimneys and clean them, some of the children never came back down. The vaults themselves, back in the days of business, these were very well-run rooms, some of them, of course, accommodating things like a fireplace. And there is with one of our rooms back in 1992, uh, during making the site safe for the public to come in here, one of the fireplaces was bricked up. And when they, of course, tried to renovate it and get it used for the public, they did actually find small fragments of bone inside it. And when these bones were taken away, it was discussed by the laboratory they were children's bones, apparently a young boy between the age of seven to 12. It was common practice in these rooms that if you hired a chimney sweep, of course, you would send them up. But because the bridge itself structurally differed, there are differences within a chimney breast here. Maybe if that boy has gone up, slipped, broken his neck, he's stuck. And the easiest way to get him back out is by lighting the fire. After the businesses shut down and the underclasses moved in, many children were born in the vaults and they would die down there too. There are lots of reports of children haunting Edinburgh vaults. Cries, whimpers, and also the laughter and singing of children have been heard by numerous people over the years. One reason for their spirits being trapped in this location is because they were all living in close living quarters and conditions back in the day. For many, many years, children there perished and died of malnutrition, of disease, and of crime and murder. Well, the children from the 1700s would have been peasants, so they would have been on the streets begging during the day and then just looking for somewhere to sleep at night. But they are very, very mischievous. They will throw things, they will torment equipment that we've got, drain batteries. We've also had people having their backs of their ankles kicked and things. So when you do have children, they, they do like to play and mess about. Some spirits don't know they're dead, that's the thing. And they latch on to visitors to the vaults, especially women. And, you know, a lot of your female guests that came along had that sense, that, 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 that their coldness from, you know, from the waist down, down their legs, that their hands were cold, almost like someone was touching them. 
and they got that feeling that was a kid, especially the guests that were mothers and had that mother instinct. They felt as if there was a, a child latching onto them and hanging onto them. One of the most often sighted ghosts is a young boy called Jack. He is one of the ones apparently responsible for, again, tugging at clothing and leaving many women down here running in fear. And again, many people think he doesn't mean harm, but because he is this mischievous spirit who does like to trip people up and throw things like stones and coins, they do think he's responsible for some of the more impish behaviour in these rooms. And right on cue... And one of the ones that does get picked up under... I just saw a shadow. Can I stop? I literally just saw a shadow. I'm not even winding you up. Seriously, not winding you up. I promise, honest to God. Right here. It went past this light. Just as we were talking there, I saw something break that light. That was weird. Like, I, you know, I'm not even joking. One of the most tragic events in the history of the city was the Great Fire of Edinburgh, which started in an engraver's shop on November the 15th, 1824. Hundreds of families living in the vaults perished. One of the largest structures in the Royal Mile is known to have caught fire. With the wind picking up, that fire spreads, and of course they can't control it. This is, of course, just in the early days of the fire service. But the vaults, they're not deemed to be an important enough area to take care of, and many of the police are known to have locked the original entrance into the vaults, leaving many people in these rooms to fend for themselves. And there are many reports down here that two, three weeks after the fire had been extinguished and the doors were unlocked, people came down to find quite a tragic scene in these rooms. There is, in this particular section here, the story that the walls themselves, well, they conduct. And that heat raging above your head meant that many people would have died of asphyxiation or smoke inhalation, and that may have led them to take their own lives. So again, many people do walk into what is a room you can see your own breath in, and they feel the opposite. They feel very hot, very warm, they can't breathe. We've actually had to, in this particular room, end our tour for some customers that do begin to feel their skin burning in these rooms. It was said that there was a bad fire there at one point, and that parents had to slit their children's throats to spare them from being burned. And that act alone, I believe, causes an imprint on the space. As you know, something so tragic and horrific. So I definitely would think that you would see some child spirits there. Maybe they don't know they can cross over, or they're lost, or they're waiting for someone. But I definitely would understand why you would see child ghosts there. But not all the spirits living in the Edinburgh vaults are quite so innocent. Much of the paranormal activity that has been experienced in the unhallowed chambers can be directly linked to murder. Edinburgh's South Bridge vaults are home to a number of paranormal beings. Once housing the dregs of society, the labyrinth of chambers are now a tourist destination and a popular mecca for ghost hunters. But this underground world also holds a criminal past. It's believed by some experts that the vaults were used by serial killing duo Burke and Hare. The pair murdered 16 people between 1827 and 1828 so that they could sell the bodies to a local doctor who would pay them good money. This is an underground. This was really like, you know, Edinburgh's underbelly. <laughs> um, if you like, back in those days, rumours have it. Various different reports of the history of Edinburgh reported that this is where, you know, the infamous grave robbers, Burke and Hare, plied their trade because people were dying every day. The mortality rate was so high, so it was ideal for them. William Burke and William Hare were two Irish labourers who lived together in Edinburgh. 
In November 1827, their lodger, a man named Donald, died of dropsy. Short on money, the pair hatched a morbid plan. It was Burke's idea to try and sell the body of the dead lodger to the local Royal College of Surgeons. And um, they contacted a Dr. Robert Knox. He offered to take the body off their hands and paid them something in the region of seven pounds for their efforts. And at the time, I think the average annual wage was about 40 pounds. So you can imagine that was quite a lot of money, particularly for two men who had up till then been working quite low paid work. So I think having sold the first body, they um, thought that it might be a profitable business to start. I think the story is they started off robbing graves, which there was a fashion for at the time, again, because it was, you could make a lot of money selling the cadaver. But that soon turned into murder. And it's kind of one of the worst kept secrets, and it is to do with this hastily bricked up doorway. Behind the corridor here lies one of Edinburgh's biggest mysteries, and it's that of William Burke and William Hare, the infamous body snatchers. There is a network of rooms behind us which does run all the way from the Southbridge vaults into the medical school, the basement of Surgeon's Hall, the School of the Anatomy. And in the 1820s, that is, of course, the scene of, well, many crimes, including William Burke and Hare's 16 murders, victims, of course, being killed, maybe even sourced in these rooms around us. During a visit to the vaults, a group of paranormal enthusiasts were trying to contact the spirits of Burke and Hare by way of a call-out session. Call-out sessions are used to generate, really, energy to be able to communicate with the spirits. In most situations, you're asking the spirits to interact with you by giving you a sound. What is that? Or perhaps manifesting themselves, or in some cases, even touching you physically. It's more or less an instruction to the spirit. You know, can you copy me? Can you whistle for me? Can you do this? It's more of an instruction to them. Zoe White was playing the part of a sacrificial victim on the night of the call-out session. Well, I was lying down. I was on, like, black bags pretending like I was a dead body. <laughs> and um, everybody was in a circle and the man was calling out, like, trying to bring a ghost forward. They were trying to call out the serial killer, saying, I've got a body for you, come forward, make yourself known. And as Zoe laid still, the atmosphere in the room changed. Well, I just felt like wind at my hair or, like, like coldness. And people standing in the circle said that they felt the, the draughts and didn't they notice anything to go out of the room. Once finished, Zoe sat down. It was then that her mother noticed something. I was sitting down and I was going to, like, brush my legs off and then my mum shouted, don't touch your legs. And then I looked down and I realised I had the handprint on my calf. The photograph clearly shows some finger marks. These finger marks are quite spaced apart, very, very wide, and it is plausible that one of the spirits did manage to physically interact with this lady, leaving their handprint on her leg. I was shocked, cos I never felt nothing happening. I didn't touch my legs, nothing, it just appeared. I must have been touched by a ghost. As the night continued, Zoe again was chosen as the subject during a scrying session. Scrying is an old Victorian method of spirit communication where you look into a mirror within a darkened room, usually used candlelight to actually illuminate the face. And what you actually do is sit and stare into the mirror. And as you stare into the mirror, your face apparently changes to the spirit that's supposed to be there. You sit in front of this tinted mirror and there's candles round to you and nobody noticed till after that there was a figure there. Usually, the spirit will try and manifest itself and show its face on your face, but in some cases, the spirits can show themselves in the mirror beside you, looking at you, or looking directly into the mirror also. 
The photograph depicts what appears to be a face manifesting itself in the mirror, looking at the lady as she's staring directly at herself and her own reflection. It's an amazing capture, and it's one that I've never seen before. Very, very unique and hard to try and get on photograph. The photograph shocked Zoe. My mum told me when I was sitting there that I had different features, like manly features, like I had like a butch face and I had damn um, stubble on my face. I was excited at the time, but like after seeing like the male figure in the mirror and the photos and the handprint, I got a bit scary. <laughs> Some people are more in tune than others. They're connected to the spirit world. And if spirits can kind of find that tune and they pick up on it, they might well want to show themselves or interact with that specific person. In this situation, the woman clearly was a focal point and was the attention of the spirits that were there. They may well have been trying to show themselves to her, to communicate with her, to, to give her a message, or she may well have had links to that place or to the spirit itself. Zoe returned to the vaults months later, but had an entirely different experience. The second time I came, I was all excited, thinking something else will happen. But as soon as I entered, I felt sick. I needed to sit down. I felt like I was going to be sick. I needed to leave the building a few times. This was horrible. The vaults continue to attract attention. Tourists in Edinburgh often find themselves drawn to the mysterious underground world, and new ghosts are being discovered all the time. The idea that so many people had likely passed away while living in there, and the fact that they're incredibly dark and atmospheric, uh, it all lends itself to you know, the perfect location for a haunting. I don't think anybody coming here to do any kind of paranormal investigation would be disappointed. I think that there's a lot of activity down here. There's a lot of untold stories down here. And I think each time that someone comes back, if you come back three or four times a year, if you came here every weekend, something different would happen. You'd get some sort of different story, a different feeling from the vaults. Paranormal experts who have visited the vaults all agree that they are extraordinarily active with all kinds of spirits. In my personal experience, I would say that there are intelligent beings in those vaults. I do actually think there is some residual energy in there as well that kind of makes it feel as oppressive as it does. But my personal experience says, yes, it is haunted. If I could describe the vaults in one word, I would say intense. If you wanted me to give you in a paragraph, probably the most haunted experience I've ever had as an investigator. If you're into all things paranormal, you have to come to the vaults. It is an intense experience. The future of the vaults looks to be just as fascinating and mysterious as the past. I think the thing with the vaults is we'll never truly know all their secrets. The amount of people that have lived in these rooms, and we are talking about most of them who didn't have a chance to write things down. Many people are illiterate, and their experiences maybe go untold. So we never know whether they're here. But I think for these rooms, as we uncover more, and there are more vaults around us which haven't even been emptied yet, maybe when they get opened up, we will discover a lot more activity in these particular rooms. And again, if there was murders happening down in these rooms, there may still be somebody lying, waiting to get discovered inside them.